Hummingbird. Holy heck. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. My name is Jason, if you're not familiar, and we're, living, we're out here in our average backyard. So we have a half acre lot, okay, and we only garden and grow, grow our food and then raise our chickens in the back yard okay so we're about half of our half acre lot so we use about a quarter of an acre or less <laughs> to do what we're doing okay so just very clear on that this is so this is what you're looking at and we are in southwest ohio and it is a beautiful beautiful day gonna be a great weekend but so uh we thank you for so much for tuning in now real quick before i get started we're going to start doing maybe some weekend vlog type things where we're just showing what we're doing throughout the weekend so this is going to encompass a saturday and sunday or whatever days i happen to have off uh, but so if you want to if you want to uh if you like that then just let us know in the comments below if uh, if you do enjoy that style of content and we'll continue to do that it may not be every weekend but when i'm out here and getting some stuff done okay so we've got some things going on today i'm going to take you real fast and just show you what we've what we've planted some things we've done videos on show you how they're doing and what we're going to continue to be doing. Right here is this rhubarb behind me. You can see the rhubarb has done really well. These are the, these are the, this is the foliage that was on there when we planted it, it's gonna die back. But here's what's grown since we planted it. Grown since we planted it. It's looking really good. And again, we're not gonna be able to harvest off of that for a year or two anyways, but it's looking great. Here in this greenhouse, we've got the peppers and tomatoes transplanted to the greenhouse, but not, uh, we didn't transplant them out of the cups because so we don't have to do that with how we plant them, but we got them outside at least. And the tomatoes are doing good, but they started suffering from the same issue a bit that the peppers did, so we've started doing the same process with them, and they're recovering nicely. We start to thin them and separate, transplant some of the items, some of the, some of the plants we want more of, transplant them here or there, but as you can see, there, there has been some yellowing on some of the leaves, and it, but they're recovering. Peppers, however, have recovered really well, and they're doing wonderful. Those are going to be transplanted, I think. We're going to transplant some of those peppers and tomatoes real fast, and sometime at some point, and show you what we're doing with that. Because maybe we want more plants than what we actually have planned on. We normally just plant two seeds in every pot. Some of those have more for a different thing we're doing. Uh, but normally two seeds in every pot and we just take the strongest out of the two and plant it. Sometimes we transplant and use more because we just can't help ourselves. Behind me, you're gonna see some lettuce right here somewhere or another that, we, that was planted from last year. It's doing really good. Planted that in the fall last year and it's done really good. And here's the green, one of the green stalks we planted with uh, some, some Tom Thumb peas. And they are starting to grow. Hopefully they can make something of it. Hope so. Hopefully they can uh, do something before it's too late. <laughs> this is something that always excites us though, is our apple trees are blossoming. Look at that. <laughs> Look at this. Apple trees are blossoming. Uh, we gotta manage those blossoms though because they can't, they're not gonna be able to handle producing apples for every blossom. So we're gonna have to manage that. This apple tree has never, has never bloomed before and it's got some blossoms. Got some buds so we're excited about those because those are all three different apple trees and those are columnar apple trees by the way so they stay in a column right there so they're not going to spread out too much <clears throat> over here we're going to show you our onions and our garlic here's our onions and garlic the onions are looking really good garlic is doing great so plenty of onions and garlic coming up so we have plenty of onions and garlic hopefully coming up good the, the garlic has two kinds of of um, hard neck garlic that we got from in my gardener and the onions is a red zeppelin okay that we got from uh, gurneys.com cherry tree looking good cherry trees got plenty of buds on it plenty of blossoms I'm not sure if you can see it or not looks good though but now it's time to get to work and get these raised beds prepared so we can get some of our stuff planted, okay? Now, first thing we're gonna do, is we gotta work through our raised beds. We have to get in there, use use this four-tined fork that I like to use. It works really good because it's long-handled and you don't have to get down too much and hurt your knees or your back. 
it works really well for doing these raised beds because the dirt is already loose as it is but we got to get in there and rake through it kind of aerate it a little bit but also get these weeds and the and the roots out so that everything can and so everything can really truly um, have the space that it needs to grow and we're going to get in there so we got to get in there redo that possibly add some dirt possibly you know use we are going to use the soil amendments hummingbird holy heck wow that's early for hummingbirds here good sign wish i could have got that on film it was on the apple it was on one of the, one of the apple trees the fertilizers we've been using is a good uh, like a 543 organic fertilizer that we got from new country organics at a great price on a lot of fertilizer so we we bought it all from there so a 543 fertilizer it was made from composted poultry manure from an operation like in the new, new england state somewhere maybe maybe new york or something so we got that and we got some a whole lot of worm castings that we bought from new country organics as well because they have a great price on it and the azomite we got from there as well new country organics by the way has a great price on all these fertilizers we are not affiliated with them we just love their products and so if you have a new country organics dealer near near you you could probably contact that individual and see if they can't get those products for you, which is how we did it. So in this bed, we're just gonna plant some uh, some radishes and some lettuce. This variety here is a French breakfast radish. French breakfast. It's a really small, elongated radish that's really, really fast as well. They grow like three weeks or less. It's pretty it's pretty awesome. Well, it actually says 25 days. So they grow really fast. And again, they're cool weather. Radishes, most all radishes need need cool weather they absolutely need cool weather because it's not they get spicy now if you want a spicy radish you can go right ahead and plant them in hot weather but i want a mild radish <laughs> i don't want spicy radishes so we're just gonna plant them really really generously just kind of drop one every so often just like that until we plant i don't know 50 or 50 to 100 i don't i don't know how many <laughs> we'll show you one thing i tend to do with something with seeds like radishes, they're really light. They're kind of, they're not terribly small, but they're small enough. I actually dot them in with my finger and leave a spot there where my finger was at. So it lets me know where I put a seed. Before I show you, just dropping them. That's not typical for me to do. You lose track of where you put them at and you, you'll uh, maybe sow too many, maybe not sow enough. <laughs> so I tend to just make a, make a dot there so I can see where they're at and then kind of zhush them all over later. Angela planted these right here on the other corner as well. So we'll see whose rashes do better. Mine will. And back here on this back side, we're gonna plant these two kinds of lettuce. Just something hopefully goes really fast. We can use for baby, for baby greens because we're gonna rip all this out here in a few weeks, probably about, probably a month. We'll rip all this out and replant it with something else. That's, that's just what we do here. So these are also better for cool weather. This is not a really heat tolerant lettuce. So we want to get it in and hopefully just get something off of it while it's cool. And then we can just go from there. And like I said, we just broadcast it. So we just kind of toss it over real, however, really easy like. And let it grow how it wants. When we get done with it like that, we just take the, take the dirt we put over top and toss it back over. Because it doesn't need to be planted very deep at all. Just give it some, a little bit of coverage. So when you water it down, there's something holding it in there. Down there in these two beds, we're just gonna do the same process that we did up there. We're gonna put some Swiss chard, which grows great down here in these beds. In this bed, they're like beet seeds. So they're really thick. You can benefit from soaking them if you'd like. Um, we're just gonna put them in here, water them heavy. But they are cluster seeds. So from this one seed, you might get three plants come up out of it. And because they're cluster seeds, we're gonna space them fairly decent. I'm only going to put like three seeds in a row or in a spot and then kind of space them a few inches this way as well because the plants will get kind of big and produce nice large leaves. So you want to, you ain't got to give them a ton of space if you don't want. We plant them for us and for the chickens. I mean, we got to share with the chickens, right? <laughs> they, they're so good to us. They, put, they give us breakfast every day. But give them a little bit of space and just dab them in there, you know, put a little hole in it, just like I do. And in that bed behind me, we're going to plant half of it in this white Russian kale and half of it in the red Russian ragged jack kale. <laughs> now while we've got, we got all the seeds planted, but honestly, we just kind of realized we have some very mischievous chickens. <laughs> 
that when they get out into the yard every evening, they like to jump in these raised beds and scratch around. That's not gonna do very good for a, a lettuce. So we've got this cover here. It's a little tunnel, poly tunnel with use, or not tunnel, it's more of a, not poly, but it's a fabric tunnel that we use uh, over our stuff in the wintertime to keep the greens growing longer. We're gonna put it over top of the kale because we're gonna try and keep that kale a little longer and cabbage moths are terrible on the kale around here. So we're gonna try and keep it on the kale to protect it from chickens and cabbage moths. And we're gonna get a, uh, a cover, a little, just a little fabric cover for the seeds on the six by six bed and the uh, Swiss chard. Now that should keep the chickens out of the raised beds. And like I said, that's, we got a really thin sheet of agarbon over top of that six by six where the rashes and lettuce was at. But now we get to eat. <laughs> We're gonna wind up our weekend here Sunday uh, early evening with a nice salad <laughs> from our uh, from our raised beds from the greens we planted last fall. And when it gets like this, we just cheer them off. We just take handfuls and cut. This is a heck of a harvest, y'all. <laughs> it's a large bowl large bowl full of lettuce heck it feels like it's almost a couple pounds of lettuce it's crazy you know the wind's getting ready to blow it away if I ain't careful but this is why we never quit planting y'all take control of your own food system it's worth it well we got a little too much lettuce for us so I'm gonna give the chickens some and whatever they whatever they don't eat we'll uh we'll compost that but let's just see how much they enjoy this is lettuce some of ours like less, some of them don't, to be honest with you. Wind's gonna blow it off. Come on, kids. Come on, kiddos. Thank you, they'll take it. Good girls. Huh. Sophia laid. Normally what's in that pan is soaked feed, so they're a little confused at first. They think it's supposed to be feed and not, not lettuce. But they'll eat most of it. All right, lettuce that we got washed, we're gonna eat. Not that the chickens aren't eating. Right here, good, beautiful lettuce, look at that. Nice. You ain't getting that beautiful lettuce in the store nowhere. Angela, Angela's over making dressing with, that, with our ranch dressing mix that we made. Yep. So, what, what's your... What is your uh, ratio there? What do you have in there? It's about a cup of mayonnaise and about a half a cup, roughly measured, because I didn't measure. I don't measure. <laughs> about a fourth of a cup of the ranch powder. And I'm just mixing that in together. And then I'm going to pour in enough milk to make it liquidy. So it's what? It's mayonnaise what? Mayonnaise, sour cream. Okay, how much sour cream is all that you said? About a half cup. Half cup sour cream. How much mayonnaise? About a cup. Cup mayonnaise, half cup sour cream. And about four, half a quarter four, cup, quarter four. cup of the mix. And then I, I just mix it in until it's mixed in and then mix in enough milk. Uh -huh. Just mix in enough milk till it's pourable, basically. Okay. Just get to the consistency that you want. It, it usually winds up being about a half cup of milk. Okay. But just get to your consistency, whatever that is. Yeah, whatever you like. Okay. What are you doing over here? Making homemade croutons on homemade leftover croutons. bread. Cool. Put butter in the bottom. Yeah, there's about two tablespoons of butter in there, and a lot of good bread. And you just let it toast up really good on one side. Mm -hmm. You want to try to get it in as much of an even layer as you possibly can. Then you let it toast up really good on one side, flip it over, let it get nice and crispy, and then when it's hot from the skillet, you toss it with whatever seasonings you want. Okay, what are you gonna toss it with? Probably some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Oh, garlic. Okay. Yep. Alrighty. All right, we're gonna get our salads put together. A little chicken, some lettuce, a little cheese, some carrots, some croutons Angela's making, and we're just gonna get her all together and enjoy our Sunday evening. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. We do appreciate it. Again, my name is Jason. This is Angela Kay. It's Art of Christian Homestead. We love you guys. God bless you and goodbye.